we have a total solar eclipse coming up on April 8th. And I'm going to talk about the impact that it's going to have on us and the whole world today. Hello everybody, I'm Gina Chaudhry. Welcome to my channel and a very warm namaste. Aham Brahmasmi. On April 8th, we will have the first solar eclipse of this year. Now it follows the lunar eclipse we just had on March 25th. You know that eclipses always occur in pairs. So right after the lunar eclipse, now two weeks after that, there will be a solar eclipse. This solar eclipse will be a total solar, uh, solar eclipse and its visibility will primarily be in North America, Mexico, Canada, and some parts of South America. In fact, it has been named as the Great American Eclipse. In the US, the eclipse will begin in the state of Texas at 1.27 p.m. Central Time, and then it sweeps through Arkansas, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York, Vermont, and then ends in Maine at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, so these are the states that are going to be able to view the total eclipse. But of course, it depends on the weather conditions on that day. So here's a map of the visibility and you can see that here. Generally, eclipses impact the whole world in some way or another, but the intensity is always more in the areas where it is visible. And also because there is a total eclipse as compared to a partial eclipse, uh, the impact will be of a higher intensity as well. Normally, the time when the end an eclipse is going on is considered inauspicious. So my suggestion is uh, to people living in the US not to do or start anything auspicious or any other activity which you hope to achieve good or benefic results uh, for in the long run. So don't start any new things like new jobs, new projects, also contracts and negotiations or important financial activities, etc. You know, stuff like that. Now let's take a look at the astrology of this eclipse so that we can understand its impact. Um, the eclipse occurs in the zodiac of Pisces and in the nakshatra of Revati. Now um, during this eclipse there will be four planets in Pisces, obviously the Sun and Rahu and also Moon, but Venus will also be in Pisces at that time. Pisces is ruled by Jupiter and Revati is ruled by Mercury. And just keep in mind that Mercury is debilitated and retrograde during this time. And Jupiter is being aspected by Saturn. So both those planets are not in a happy situation. To make matters a little more uh, challenging, should I say, the planetary war between Mars and Saturn will be at its peak on April 8th and 9th, which will disturb the energy, the overall energy even more. The sun in uh, astrology represents our soul, our ego, also our father, but above all, it indicates our soul's desire. This is why a solar eclipse usually impacts us at the soul level and has very potent energy for change in ourselves and in our life. But every solar eclipse reminds us of different things depending upon the planetary placements involved. So this specific, uh, this specific one represents endings and new beginnings. So this one is reminding us to close and release all those things in our life that are toxic or no longer serve our higher good. Also, it may be uh, signaling that certain things in our life may be coming to an end so that a new chapter can commence. It could be bad relationship or toxic boss or a coworker could leave your life. You could have a job change or relocate, or even it could be something very small in your life. It doesn't have to be a really big thing either. Most importantly, every solar eclipse always guides us to manage and control our egos and also make wise decisions in our life. Now, isn't that the hardest to do is to control our ego? That's why we need a reminder of the solar eclipse every few months. The nakshatra of Revati is the last of the 27 nakshatras and Pisces is also the last zodiac of the 12 uh, signs. Hence the eclipse signifies endings, which means the uh, completion of one cycle and moving to a new cycle of experience. Some people may experience this ending and finalization of some area of their life over the next six months. 
especially in the places where it was visible. So this impacts the US the most. Now let's take a look at some of the world predictions. Just remember that they mostly apply to the US, but we could certainly see the impact in other countries as well. So first and foremost, the sun represents the government, politicians, high level executives, and generally people that are in power. And Mercury represents finance, banking, communication, and the stock market. Venus is involved and so that represents extreme wealth and wealthy individuals. Rahu, on the other hand, represents IT, technology, AI, telecom, electronic devices, and the social media. This is an indication that there could be significant decrease in the wealth of the elite class. It also represents that the wealthiest organizations and especially the tech and IT business organizations could suffer financially. This applies more, like I said, to the U.S. organizations. There can be lots of layoffs in these, specifically these industries, as well as there may be some leadership changes in these industries and overall changes in the tech sectors. Individuals associated with the entertainment industry could also fo uh, face some professional difficulties. Now, this also points towards an economic recession and the stock market could become very volatile and end up with some sort of a negative correction. A lot of people are interested in that. Now, there is the possibility of technical issues with websites and computer systems of different kinds that could impact our daily lives. Um, there could even be cybersecurity issues that occur. Nowadays, you know, things get fixed very quickly. So these technical glitches could occur, but they could get fixed very quickly. But there's a possibility of these occurring. There could be a negative incident related to the image or health of a top politician or high level executive that could come as a big surprise. I think a lot of people have guessed that, but I don't like the name names. So I'm not saying that. There may be a negative event in politics that results in public protests or violent situations within the US. And there could be a period of a lot of unrest between the public and the government in retaliation to laws or reforms. In fact, in some other countries, the government could even be overthrown uh, via violent means. So this is definitely indicated by this uh, eclipse. Now, the ruling deity of the Nakshatra Revati is Pusan Devata, which represents nourishment via providing an abundance of food. Also, technically, it represents milk and milk products. So this eclipse may impact food production adversely and food prices may rise quite a bit. And this could also be the result of new wage laws that come into effect as if the food price is not high already. Food crops could suffer as a result of weather conditions and farmers may also face economic hardships due to this hardship. Now, aware, I'm aware that there's some sort of farmer agitation going on uh, in India currently. And so if the government does not handle it quickly and intelligently, that could end pretty badly. Now, there could even be problems in the supply chain or distribution of food products due to issues with sea cargo. And this could apply to mainly the US, but also several other countries. Since Pisces is a water sign, there can be weather related natural or man-made accidents and disasters. The possibility of flooding, tornadoes, tornadoes hurricanes is high in the next six months um, in, the, uh, in the US. The chances of accidents, natural disasters in the northeast part of the USA are high. In fact, the northeast part of any country could be especially sensitive to calamities and disasters because Revati rules the northeast direction. Now, the sun represents our health, specifically immunity, bone strength and our vision. So there is a possibility of a lot of people getting sick from coughs, colds and sinus types of issues because basically low immunity uh, types of uh, infectious illnesses may spread. People could also have digestive issues, especially related to lactose intolerance matters. The sun represents our father, so there can be health or, or trouble to our father. Some people may also have relationship issues with their father due to ego clashes. So make sure you maintain good relationship with your father. Now, the sun is the significator of the natural fifth house that rules children and that also rules conception. So per Vedic astrology, this is not a favored time for conception of children. So a week before and a week after the eclipse, I would recommend that you don't 
you know, go for conception. Specifically to India, there could be some tension on both, both the borders. The tensions between the religious factions can escalate and there can be some violent, um, you know, mob activity in the eastern states. The possibility of natural disasters in the northeast is also high, like I mentioned, it's a sensitive area. So those are the predictions, uh, general predictions that I'm making for the US and you know, they're not good predictions, but this is a very, very challenging eclipse. It's going to be very powerful because it is going to be visible in the country and it is a total eclipse. So this is just some of the predictions I'm making. I hope most of them don't come out true. This is the one time I'm hoping my predictions don't come true, but that's just something that I feel could happen. What are some of the things that you can or should do during an eclipse that would be beneficial? Well, you can and should chant mantras during the eclipse. Uh, any mantra is okay, but the suggested mantra for Hindus is the Surya or the Sun mantra or the Gayatri mantra. All other faiths are also encouraged to chant certain prayers during while the eclipse is going on. Now the reason mantra chanting is encouraged is firstly because it helps to calm the mind and reduce the stress and agitation, which is common, uh, a common impact or effect of an eclipse. Also, Rahu has the energy of multiplicity and chanting is a repetitive process. Uh, so the benefit of the mantra is increased due to the multiplicity aspect also. So you get the benefit of chanting <laughs> multiplied time by many times. Also, after the eclipse has ended, it's a good idea to make any donations that you like. It could be money, food or any other necessary items to a needy person. Whatever you choose to donate is perfectly okay. So that's something that you do in order to get, you know, encourage some good karma for yourselves. Now I'm going to move on to some basic guidelines for each ascendant, but remember these are just very basic guidelines. They're reminders sort of, and there are more detailed predictions for the month of April in my last video. And if you haven't watched that, I will add a link to that video in my description box if you want to watch it. These predictions or guidance, I should say, is based on your rising sign or ascendant. They are not based on your Western sun signs. You are used to thinking yourself to be based on magazines and newspapers. So make sure you're listening to the correct one. Um, also a reminder to su please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already sub done so. And those that have already subscribed, a very, very big thank you to you. Also make sure you share this video with all your friends and family. So here we go. I'm doing some predictions now for each ascendant. Aries, the eclipse is in your 12th house. This is a time to control your expenses and also try to bring more spirituality in your life and less focus on material possessions. There's the possibility of losses. So manage your finances with utmost care. Also, you could have some sleep issues during this time. So try to relax your mind as much as you can. Taurus, Eclipse is in your 11th house. It's time to manage your relationships with all your social contacts and your professional network. But importantly, you need to give more Im the importance to people and relationships in your life rather than obsessing on earning and material gains. Be visible and expand your connections. There can be benefits from them. So focus less on material things, more on people. Gemini, Eclipse is in your 10th house. Focus on your career by putting in hard work as opposed to finding the easy way out. You may be going through a period of disappointment and feel as if your status in life is being challenged. You need to do some self introspection and start valuing relationships more than your ego and status. Also connect with your father and maintain a positive relationship with him. Cancer, the eclipse is in your ninth house. This is a time to increase your skill set or gain additional education. You need to drop your ego where you think you know everything and let others coach and guide you. For some, it might be a good time to get a spiritual guru or a life coach or mentor of sorts to help you through the tough decisions. So if you're having a tough time, maybe let others help you or coach you and help you make those decisions in life that you may be confused about. Leo, the eclipse is in your eighth house. So you need to focus on your health and well-being. 
drop your bad health habits, don't overwork or overdo physically for others and overlook your own health in this whole process. You also need to drop your ego in terms of relationship with your in-laws and treat them fairly. So take care of your health, don't overwork physically. Virgo, eclipse is in your seventh house. Work on your marriage and spouse and don't let ego get in the way of your communication. If you have a business partner, then this applies to them and all your working partnerships and teams at work as well. You also now understand that there's no need to overthink or try hard to resolve minor matters of life. Some things just resolve in time. Also learn to relax your mind and enjoy life as opposed to always being uh, worrying or in the work mode or overworking. Some things just happen with time. Uh, Libra, the eclipse is going to be in your sixth house. So you need to pay attention to your health in terms of maintaining a healthy daily schedule and routine. Eating and resting on time is critical in terms of your health. You also need to manage your attitude with your coworkers and subordinates in the workplace. You may be imagining animosity or something that isn't really there. So don't imagine everybody's out to get you. Um, Scorpio, your eclipse is in your fifth house. And this is an indication that you may not be managing your relationship with your children or your love life appropriately. You need to step back and assess if your expectations from your children are realistic or not. Also, you may have an ego in your love life that is preventing you from admitting some of the mistakes that you've made in the past. You also need to manage your ego with everyone at this time. You're having a good time and so you may have an ego, overinflated ego. Sagittarius, this eclipse is in your fourth house, so it's a reminder to maintain a very positive relationship with your mother. Also, you need to spend quality time at home and make your home a happy place instead of a beautiful place. Focus on your own effort in achieving happiness from the small things in life instead of always thinking and wanting big material desires or beautifying your home and worrying about the real estate. Capricorn, the eclipse is going to be in your third house. This is a reminder that you need to connect with your siblings and also that you may be directing your energy in the wrong areas in your life. It might be time to put your efforts in different areas if you wish to move forward. You may need to make an improvement in your living home environment so that you can make uh, so you can get more happiness. So there needs to be some change in your home environment so you can get happier. Aquarius, this eclipse is in your second house. That serves as a reminder to give importance to friends and family and value those relationships in your life. And also need to eat healthy. You should also think before you speak so that you don't hurt people with your words. Suddenly you're going to realize how to proceed forward in your life after struggling for some time. This will be beneficial if you take action to move forward on your action plans at this time. Pisces, certainly not the last, most important for you. The eclipse is in your first house, so you have the biggest impact from the eclipse. There could be a major turning point or change in your life. You make choices for yourself to remove unwanted or toxic people, relationships, and matters from your life. You now turn inward and focus on yourself and your sole purpose and what you need to do to achieve it. You need to check to see if you're putting enough effort and focus on your own growth and expect less from others. It's a time for deep introspection and change and growth for Pisces. So it's a wonderful time for Pisces, although there's going to be a lot of changes for Pisces over the next six months. Pisces will have the most major impact because this eclipse is happening in the zodiac of Pisces. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. I wish everybody well. I will see you on my next video.